Have you ever been walking through the woods and come across a dense, lush patch of vegetation? And then you're like, wait, it's non-native invasive. Well, just because it's green doesn't mean it's healthy. Hi, I'm Andy from Eco Foresters, and we're here today to talk about non-native invasive plants. My dad used to say he managed by benign neglect, and that nature would take care of itself. Well, that's not happening anymore because of these non-native invasive plants we've introduced, and they're gonna get worse if we don't do something about it now. So I and Christian, our forest restoration crew leader, are here to talk about non-native invasive plants, the history of them, how to identify them, how to control them, and what'll happen if we don't do anything about them. Hi, I'm Christian. I am our forest restoration crew leader. So you might be asking yourself, how exactly do non-native invasive species get here in the first place? Well, there are both purposeful reasons and accidental reasons, and some of those include that they were introduced by nurseries, um, imported as ornamentals, or they could have been brought over here to be used as erosion control or other things like living fences, and just the general expansion of colonization and globalization has brought forth a lot more non-native invasive species in our region today. Most of them were introduced around the turn of the 20th century and here in western North Carolina some of the biggest culprits or species of concern include oriental bittersweet, multiflora rose, tree of heaven, kudzu, and miscanthus grass. They are often found in areas of disturbance Things like roads, along trails, along creeks, maybe in old pastures, or even in development areas. These species can degrade forest health and timber value by preventing forest regeneration, by crowding out native plant species, by changing disturbance regimes like causing canopy collapse, and they can even become vectors for new diseases for our native plant species. Let's talk more about those five non-native invasive species that I mentioned and about how we can identify them. Bittersweet is a vine with oval to rounded leaves and a pointed tip. The bark has speckles on it known as lenticels and in the fall they will have multiple red berries with yellow wings. This vine is known to girdle and even topple the most mature trees. Multiflora rose can become a large shrub with very big thorns and arching branches. In early summer, they will have many white, fragrant flowers. The leaves are compound with multiple leaflets, and at the base of each leaf, you'll find fringes. This plant is known to crowd out many native species. Tree of Heaven is a medium to large tree with smooth gray bark and compound leaves that look similar to black walnut. When crushed, the twigs and branches smell like Cheerios, and some even consider it to smell like peanut butter. This tree can displace native trees, and unfortunately, it is the main food source and vector for the invasive spotted lanternfly. Kudzu is a fast-growing vine, some say up to a foot a day. When the shoots are young, the vines are hairy. They have leaves with three leaflets, and when crushed, the leaves and stems smell sweet. This plant can overcrowd and outcompete native vegetation covering everything in its path. Miscanthus grass is a tall bunch grass with long leaves and a white mid vein. The seed heads resemble long tassels and they are wind dispersed. In the dormant season, this grass looks goldish in color to silver. This grass crowds out native vegetation and unfortunately increases severity and frequency of wildfire, which in turn increases the spread of miscanthus grass. Let's talk about how to control these plants. You may want to consider the different types of hand tools that you'd use. You might need loppers, hand pruners, handsaw, a hatchet, and you should also consider wearing personal protective equipment like eyeglasses or gloves. 
Depending on your management goals, you may also want to consider using herbicide. Some of the common herbicides that we use include glyphosate, triclopyr. I also like to use an indicator dye. I prefer blue. Surfactant can also be useful, and this helps with the chemical uptake. Some of the herbicide application vessels that you might want to use could be a backpack sprayer, a dauber bottle with a sponge tip, or a handheld sprayer. And in terms of methods of control, the first we can talk about is pulling or mechanical. With hand pulling, you wanna make sure that you get as much of the roots as possible. You also want to bag up the plants afterward or leave them to hang to dry to avoid any re-sprouting. This is very targeted control with no damage to surrounding plants. This kind of method is useful for small infestations of things like privet, multiflora rose, or young bittersweet. The second method is the cut stem method. This involves using an herbicide. It is a very targeted herbicide application method and it works well for vines or shrubs that have small stems but maybe are covering a very large area. Stuff that might be just too big to hand pull. The hack and squirt method involves using herbicide as well but you use a hatchet. You're generally going to target large trees or shrubs and you use the hatchet to make hack marks around the base of the tree or shrub and then thereafter, you spray the herbicide into that fresh cut. This is also a very targeted method with little to no damage to surrounding vegetation. Foliar spraying involves the use of a backpack sprayer and you spray the leaves of your target plant. The herbicide solution is a very low concentration. However, the cons of this method are that it is more difficult to avoid collateral damage of surrounding plants, so you must be very judicious and careful with your spraying. This method is good for small plants that are covering a very large area where you're spot spraying, or they're good for plants that are a monoculture like kudzu that has crawled over everything in an expansive area. Our forests today are often infested with non-native invasive plants. And we need to do something about it. If we don't, they're gonna keep expanding, growing more and more, and displace, outcompete the native plants, and even in some cases, directly kill the native plants. This is gonna degrade all of the forest ecosystem, whether it's the aesthetics and the recreation values or timber values. Forests can't regenerate with non-native invasive plants around them. If we do more disturbance and more development of natural areas, that's gonna open up more areas at risk for being invaded by non-native invasive plants. So we need to address this issue. Please help us in raising the awareness and taking action against these non-native invasive plants. I hope this video informed and inspired you to take action against non-native invasive plants on your property or to help us spread the word so others learn the importance of controlling these damaging agents in our forest.